If you're driving a Packard MX truck and you're currently having DPF problems, well today I'm gonna be going over everything about DPFs. I'm gonna be going over what a DPF filter is, as well as kind of talk about different things that you need to look out for, especially when you're having DPF problems on your truck. My name is Jason Chice. I'm the CEO and founder of OTR Performance. We help owner operators and fleet owners take matters in their own hands and do their own diagnostics. If you'd like to learn more, check us out at otrperformance.com for more information. So let's get started. DPF stands for diesel particulate filter. And what this filter does is it traps all the ash and the soot level that's going on from your engine. So your engine produces a lot of soot from the engine. And what after treatment does is it collects that soot and that turns that soot into ash. And this is where the DPF filter comes into play. This DPF filter is a filter on your after treatment system and it usually is able to be serviced. So it can be serviced in multiple different ways. You can clean it or you can replace it. But here's what you need to know is that this DPF filter, once you start having issues with it, you'll start to see some fault codes that appear on your truck. So here's what we're gonna kind of explain a little bit. We're gonna explain certain fault codes on your Packard MX that you need to know about so that way you understand that this is related to the DPF filter. We have three different fault codes that you need to understand. The first fault code that I'm gonna go over is P3798. And this P3798 is related to the high soot level that you get. The SPN and FMI for this specific fault code is 3251 FMI 16. This fault code right here, this SPN 3251 FMI 16 relates to high soot level on your truck. So if you're dealing with this issue right now, your truck is throwing a specific fault code and it's 3798 where also on your dash, you could also see an SPN 3251 FMI 16. And what this relates to is high soot level on your truck. So your truck is actually gonna to start to stay on the dashboard. Your soot level's high, engine derate soon, you need to perform parked regeneration. And so what happens when you have these type of fault codes is that this fault code is related to your DPF soot level, which is also being measured by a few different after treatment sensors called your um, DPF filter sensor. And this DPF pressure sensor measures the different pressure in your DPF filter so that way it knows exactly how full that DPF filter is. So if you're having DPF pressure sensor issues, it's going to be related to, it's going to cause certain fault codes that are going to put your truck into a high soot level. The second fault code is going to be the very similar fault code, but it, the numbers change just a little bit. And these are the fault codes that kind of take the severity a little bit more and more uh, until we get to the most severe status. And this fault code right now is going to be P3797. And the same thing kind of here with the SPN number. The SPN is, again, it's 32. 51 FMI is 15. So the FMI is 15 on this specific fault code and it's uh, 3251 for the SPN. And this fault code right here, it says that the soot level is medium. That's what that means. And the next fault code that we're gonna go to is what I would call the most important. And this is where you kind of see this and it can go to this level very, very quickly. And this fault code again is P37. 96. This is a very important fault code to, to understand. You got the SPN number is 3251 and it's FMI zero. Now here's the interesting thing about this specific fault code. Is your truck is experiencing this issue, your truck will no longer be able to do regen inside the truck. This is where it's very interesting for you to understand that you need to have a diagnostic tool to be able to do any type of regen. But the, here's the thing that you also need to know is that this specific fault code is probably a custom with another fault code. So if you have a bad EGR valve, if you have a bad knock sensor, or if your truck just, you know, if you have a bad seventh injector, and if your truck can't regen properly, you're gonna go through this type of severities very quickly. What you also need to know is even if you idle the truck for a very long time, what happens if you idle the truck, you build a lot of soot in your DPF filter and you actually start activating different fault codes depending on your severity. So this is what you need to know to really understand your DPF filter as well as understanding the fault codes associated with it. This specific fault code is specifically designed for a Packard MX engine. If you have another type of engine, you might wanna understand those specific fault codes because there's only, every fault codes are specific to each engine and engine group. So if you have a Cummins or if you have a Volvo, those fault codes are associated with 
those type of information for fault codes. So here's really everything you need to know when it comes to DPF filters, especially the fault codes that are associated with it. And then we're also gonna be talking about what diagnostic tool you need to have, especially with how to also use a diagnostic tool to put your truck into a DPF regen. What is a DPF regen? So a DPF regen has a couple different modes in it. And the first mode, we're just gonna be talking about active, we're gonna be talking about passive, and we're also gonna be talking about forced. Why I talk about these different types of regen is because if your truck, you know, you're driving a truck that has a Packard IMAX engine, it has an after treatment system on it, and you'll have a regen button on your truck that usually probably won't work when you want it to. And so really the only time it'll work is when it's actually put in a mode where it, the truck knows it's in high soot mode, and you might be able to get away with pushing down and holding down your regen button to go through what's called the truck itself trying to do a regen. But what we're gonna be talking about right now is different modes in regen when it comes to active, passive, as well as forced. An active regen is when your, your exhaust system is, is putting fuel into your exhaust system to raise your temperature up of your DPF filter. And what it's doing is, is burning off that soot very actively. So if you, let's say your truck is driving and it's in a mode where it couldn't perform an active regen, driving down the highway, if your truck is uh, under lots of load, your engine knows all the different components it needs for it to do that active regen. When your soot level reaches a certain uh, percentage, it triggers that, you know, hey, we need to do an active regen, and your truck naturally will go through a regen process. But here's what you also need to know, is if you cancel those active regen, if your truck is asking for, hey, I wanna do a regen, but then you just got loaded, or you just got stuck, you know, uh, parked, and your truck is asking for a regen, if you stop that regen that is naturally gonna occur based on time or miles driven, what happens over time is that that regen gets canceled, 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 and it builds up that soot level inside your engine. And so your engine computer is calculating all these different things and what happens is if you ignore it, you'll start getting fault codes and your truck will automatically try to force you into doing a regen. So if you're driving a truck right now and it's stuck with high soot level, that's sometimes what happens is you ignore these fault codes, you ignore the messages on your dashboard and you get into this mode where your truck is now forcing you to do a regen and it's asking you to even do a parked regen. And so right now, active regen is when your truck is driving down the road or asking for it. A passive regen is really when your exhaust is so hot enough that it's burning it naturally. And really passive regen is very, um, you only get this done um, a few times, but your truck is natural is passively burning off that silt level. So that means your truck is, you know, really fully loaded and it's driving down the road and it's passively doing a regen burn while, while it's driving and it's not injecting fuel into the after treatment system to burn off that soot in the filter. And so, you know, sometimes it gets away with doing a passive regen while you're driving down the road. And the last is, is a forced regen. Now a forced regen is when a diagnostic scan tool does this forced regeneration process. You have to have a tool to be able to enter into the forced regeneration mode. If you don't have a tool, well, you won't be able to put your truck into a mode where it accepts um, that regen that it needs. So a lot of times when you're putting your truck into different severities, it needs to see a forced DPF regen in order for it to validate all the different components of your after treatment system, and then make sure that it clears the fault code as soon as that DPF regen is successful. So that's what you need to know when it comes to the different types of regens. And force DPF regen is really, there's a couple different tools that you can use. You can use OTR Diagnostics for a Packard MX. So OTR Diagnostics is gonna give you the capabilities to do the force DPF regen. If you have OTR Diagnostics, it's very easy to use. You would open up the app, you would go ahead and click on the commands menu at the very bottom. Then you would go navigate to the force regen option, and then you would click the button that says start force DPF regen. Now, OTR Diagnostics gives you the capabilities to do force DPF regens for your Packard MX engines. If you have another diagnostic tool that does give you that force DPF regen, you just wanna understand Packard MX are very specific to the EPAs and different versions you have. So just because you have a diagnostic tool that 
says it can do DPF regen, you want to ensure that it's really compatible for your engine. I definitely don't want you to be stuck stranded where your truck needs to do a DPF regen and you don't have the proper equipment to help you get out of that situation. So in conclusion, we just went over everything in related to the DPF filter. This is going to help you understand your DPF system. It's going to help you understand certain fault codes that trigger your truck asking for the soot level and why you need to do a DPF regen on your truck. And we also kind of talked about different types of regens. You got active, you got passive, and you also got forced DPF regen. Now, understanding this information is going to save you lots of money, especially when you're driving over the road and having DPF issues. Now, if you're having DPF issues, take these matters seriously. If you'd like to learn more about your Packard MX engine, you can watch the next video that's going to dive deeper into the components that make up your after treatment system. We will go over all the different things that you need to know, especially when you're driving a Packard MX engine. If you have any questions or comments, drop it below. Thanks for watching.